Hi, this is Carol Bejin here with Chris Pat, and she's kindly sharing her screen as I walk her through how to set up her MailerLite account so that it makes her life easier down the road. So, Chris, could you please go into the top right menu where you see Fritzmark Publishing and click that drop down menu? And then navigate your way to Domains. Great. This is going to be a two step process. In order to send an email from MailerLite, you need to have an email address associated with the domain name that we, we are setting up here. So if your hosting does not provide a free email address, you can use G Suite, which costs $6 US per month to get an email address associated with your domain name. So this is what Chris has. So we're gonna to proceed to verify the email address first and then we will authenticate the domain. Chris uses her fritzmarkpublishing.com. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the domain name that we're granting permission to MailerLite to send on behalf of the domain name. So she's gonna click that orange button that says add domain and then write an email address associated with fritzmarkpublishing.com. So obviously you need to have that email address set up somehow. This will vary. So right now uh, they're sending a verification email. So Chris is gonna need to go check her email. We're just gonna pause the video while she does that. Chris logged into her Gmail account and it was actually hidden. Uh, it was not under the primary tab or the promotions tab. It was under a different tab. So if you don't see your email right away, make sure you check the junk folder or whatever other tab. So, she sees the emails that says MailerLite, please verify your email address. And she's gonna click on that and confirm my email address. When you do that, you will be prompted to log back into your MailerLite account, but since she's logged in and the account is open, we are good. So now the email address has been verified, let's click on that gray button that says Authenticate. Now we have a lot of copy and pasting ahead of us. As to where you're gonna to need to go to copy and paste this, it will depend on where your name servers are located. For Chris's situation here, she bought the domain name through wordpress.com. Very few of you will be in this situation. Many will be with GoDaddy, Bluehost, SiteGround, Namecheap, various other service providers. So she's gonna copy and paste the very first DKIM here. So she's clicked on copy. And she's gonna to navigate to the second tab where she's got her domain open. So this is very different. You're probably not gonna to have to do this exact same thing, but you'll do something similar if you're with Bluehost, just Google how to change DNS settings, Bluehost, and then you will find out. So now for her, we're gonna go on fritzmarkpublishing.com, click on that. And then where it says name servers and DNS, we're gonna click on that. So no matter who you're with, it's gonna be something similar to that. Then she's gonna click on DNS records. And we're gonna add a new record. So under type, if you scroll all the way down, you've got a record, but you've got other options. So let's look at that drop down menu where it says A. And let's pick text, TXT. So we're adding a text record and we're pasting that very few first thing that she copied. Paste that under name, control V, perfect. Now do note that in her case, she already has .fritzmarkpublishing.com on the right. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the duplicate thing in the middle. Perfect. And then in the next field, we need to copy the next part that goes with that. So let's go back to the MailerLite tab and copy the value that's on the right. And go back there, perfect. Paste that there. And then we're gonna add new DNS record. Perfect. Now let's do the exact same thing, but with the second row, we also need to do add a text record. So really we just need to copy and paste the next two things. So it's a text record again, so just leave TXT, that's fine. You're pasting the first thing there. Uh, and then let's copy the value of that. Once again, just repeating copy and paste. 
here we go so we've pasted the second value there and that's basically given mailer light the rights to mail things on behalf of your domain name so let's scroll down just a little bit and hit save or add new dns record okay it says that the dns record has been added now you have to be a little patient because we have to wait for what we call propagation propagation is like servers talking amongst themselves and relaying this information and spreading the word around so that can take a little while so let's go back to the green tab for mailer light and you can click that check DNS records. Chances are it's not going to be live just yet because of propagation. So it's telling you it is not there, but it is warning you it may take up to 24 hours. So Chris will come back tomorrow and check to make sure that these things are green. That is essential. Otherwise, you will not be able to send emails out. So let's just cancel out of that window. And this is where you can verify that tomorrow. And it does show that the SPF record is already correct. It's just that the DKIM is not correct yet, but that's awaiting propagation. So let's click cancel. And at least we've got the authentication sorted. We just need to wait to make sure we did it right. Now let's go back up to that drop down menu on the right. And let's make sure we've got our default settings correct. So let's go under account settings. And let's fill in this information here. So you need to make sure you have a mailing address entered in MailerLite. This is a legal requirement from the CAN-SPAM law. Any and all emails that go out need to have a real mailing address. If she wants to turn off the MailerLite logo, she totally can. She just has to toggle that switch to off. And then you can save that. Now let's go to default settings. That is the place where most people forget to go and put information. For 99% of the people, this will not be filled in. You need to put that in if it's not there. Now you can go through the settings here and adjust as you see fit based on your needs. Scroll all the way down and click save. There's one more thing we need to check. Let's go back to the very top right and deal with the unsubscribe settings just the same way. So in the drop down menu next to Fritzmark Publishing, Chris is going to go to unsubscribe settings. So this is that people will see if they decide to unsubscribe and then they will choose a yes or no, that's fine. But you may want to give them a way to follow you on BookBub, on Goodreads, on Amazon. So let's do that. Let's edit this unsubscribe form. So when you click on the left here, you can change that wording. What I would recommend you do is click somewhere in there and then it allows you to modify the text on the right. So on the right, Put a few enters for line breaks and then you can say you can follow me on Amazon, Goodreads, BookBub. So now we're going to figure out Chris's author page on Amazon. So let's navigate to Amazon. And when you click on your author name, you can just copy that URL at the top. This is the page where they can click that follow button, which says following right now. So copy and paste that. Highlight the word Amazon and link it to that. Make it open in a new tab. Let's do the same with BookBub. And I will show you a little trick on how you can force people to automatically follow you just by adding something to the URL. So I want you to go to the very end of your name, put a question mark, follow equals true. Yeah, now copy this and then link bookbub to that add a link and open in a new tab and let's do the same with facebook
open the new tab, insert. Now you want to save that. I recommend you leave the title as is. Do you really want to unsubscribe? And then you can move your not a fan of emails. You can follow Chris Pat. Uh, move that paragraph above the you are currently subscribed. Yeah. So cut, control X. And then put your cursor before the first paragraph and paste, which is control V. And then put an enter. There we go. Now you can save. Let's click on page update. Okay, so now we are back on the screen. Let's test out to make sure that our links work. So if you click on Amazon, it takes you to Amazon. Perfect. Let's double check the other two. And it says you are now following. And then let's click on Facebook. Great. Now that we have our default settings in place, let's go and create a form where we can capture new people's email addresses. So let's click on forms at the very top. And let's create a new one. So where it says create pop up on the right, it's actually a drop down menu that you can change and you can say create embedded form. So there's two different things. If you want a pop up, you can create a pop up so that goes on top of whatever page you have on your site. It kind of darkens the background and then people can close it. Or you can create an embedded form which goes somewhere on your site. You could put it in the sidebar on the main page, but it's not a pop up. It's on your actual page. There are differences obviously between the two. Some people turn off pop ups. So be aware that some people will not see them. So it's always a good idea to have a non pop up version of your form. So let's create an embedded form and give it a name that will make sense. So maybe you want to call it website sidebar so that you know it's going in your website sidebar. Save and continue. Now, when people sign up, they will be added to a group. Chris here has a lot of groups already, so she could either select something here but maybe she can create a new group that's called website sidebar. So on the top right, it says add new group. And maybe she wants to call it website sidebar 2020. So she knows it's whatever bonus she had in 2020 offered in her website sidebar. So now she needs to select that new group she created, save and continue. Okay, now it says newsletter, sign up for news and special offers. Eh, not the most enticing text, so let's change that. I recommend getting rid of the word newsletter, and so that's the heading. Maybe you say, want a free story? There's GDPR and other things involved here, but you really don't want to mislead your readers. Make it clear that they are indeed subscribing, but do say that they can unsubscribe at any time. So now Chris is happy with what she's got. She's going to click on save. So this is the content is right, but maybe Chris wants to play with the colors. If you want, just make sure it doesn't clash with your website too much. You want something that will pop, but without clashing, but you could change the buttons, the text and the colors on the right, but this video will not cover this here on the right. You do have settings and you could technically add those things here, or you could do some of these things on your website. I don't recommend doing the confirmation checkbox. Chris, can you just select that for a second? So we see what happens when you do that. It does this here. You could do this. It makes it more GDPR compliant, but, I think if you word it correctly by saying you're making it clear, it says subscribe. They obviously know they are subscribing. So I think you can remove that checkbox. It's very obvious that they are subscribing to receive news from you. Now at the very bottom, there's a recapture that you could potentially turn on, but this is the kind where you have to identify traffic lights, bicycles, overpasses, and sometimes I don't even pass that test. So I recommend not adding it until you run into a problem where you got a lot of spam addresses. 
Now, at the very top in the center, you also have a success message that you should change. If you click in the top bar in the middle. Now, by default, it says that. But because we've enabled double opt-in, we want to change that text. We don't want them to think they're already on the list because they do need to confirm. So let's click on where it says you have successfully joined our subscriber list and change that to please check your inbox to confirm your subscription. And then click Save. Great. So now we've got the thank you message sorted. Let's click on Next. Okay. Now we want to double check that this particular form has double opt-in enabled, and it is. It says on. What a double opt-in is, it won't allow people to subscribe right away. When they sign up and say subscribe, they enter their email address. It will then send another email saying, please confirm that you want to be on this list, and then they have to click. So it sends an extra email. It's an extra step. But since you're paying based on the number of subscribers, it's an excellent idea to double opt-in. Click on double opt-in email. So now you want to go through all the settings you see here and make sure that the from email address is populated. 99.9% .9 of the time, it won't be populated, and that is why your double opt-in email is not firing. This is where you need to edit and make sure that your mailing address is correct. Right now it just says blank company name. The mailing address is correct once she goes in here, so all she needs to do is click Next. This will overwrite the save template, so now the mailing address should appear properly. And let's double check. Now it's saved. Perfect. Let's scroll up and double check the confirmation uh, double opt-in thank you page. So let's edit that. We're going to click Edit Content and include our book funnel link. But So let's first go and retrieve our book funnel link. So if you're not familiar with book funnel, you can learn more if you go to bookfunnel.com. So first we need to find the book. So she's already uploaded the free book that she wants to give away. Now she can create a new page or use one that she has. What is important here? is that this is a double opt-in confirmation page, so that means people are already on your list. So you do not want to require an email address to access this link because they've just given you the email address. So you just copy the link for readers, and then you go back to your mailer light. So let's click on that box for the text. There's an icon that looks like pen with paper, and you go on the right and you change that. So you can say you can download your free book or whatever way you want to phrase this. Now there's different ways you can do this. You can either select the text that you've already written and then click that link, chain link icon, click on that, and then you can insert the link and paste that URL and click insert. Open in a new tab is a great idea. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could also copy and paste that HTML URL just below it. So click enter as if you're adding a new paragraph. And then control V to paste it and make sure that you select that URL again and make sure that it is linked. So select that, edit, and change the text so it's actually the whole thing as well. Okay, save, open a new tab, save. If you wanted to, you could also upload the book cover. People like to click on book covers. So if you wanted to do that, just click Save for the text box. Now drag and drop from the right something that says Image and put it on the left right there. That's perfect. Now click on that image. And then you need to find it on your desktop somewhere. Okay, so we've selected the image. Now we also want to make sure that we make that image linked to that exact same URL. So on the right, paste that uh, book funnel URL again and open in a new tab, save. Perfect. You can just click next. Okay, so we've got our form set up, the double opt in email set up, as well as the thank you page for that. So let's now put that form 
in our website somewhere and exactly where is the website sidebar because that's what we called it. Click on overview and then scroll all the way down to retrieve the short HTML code we need to put in our site. So copy that to the clipboard. This is the form itself. In a separate tab here, Chris is going to navigate to her WordPress installation. Now, everybody has different themes, different sidebars, but normally if you go under appearance and then widgets, and now you see there's a sidebar there. On the left-hand side, widgets are basically different types. You, there's one called custom HTML. So if we scroll down on the left, we should be able to see custom HTML. You can click on that and then it will ask you which sidebar you want that in. So let's do sidebar, add widget, and then scroll back up. Let's paste that code in there. Perfect, let's do save. Let's switch to the MailerLite tab. And I wanted to point out here, just above that, you have the MailerLite Universal and they tell you where to put it. It needs to go right before the closing head tag. If you copy the first snippet, that JavaScript snippet, let's copy that to our clipboard. Okay, and let's go back to WordPress and put that somewhere. Now this will vary greatly. It's not going to go in a widget. We need to put it in the header of our theme. Let's go to plugins and add new. What I'm about to show you should work for 99% of people. Okay, let's do add new in the very top. And on the right, there is a search field. Put in header and footer. Okay, if you look at the first few plugins here, any of these should do. It's a matter of we want to include script in the header and footer. That's the gist of it. Uh, look at the number of reviews, the overall rating, how recently they updated the plugin. So based on that, I am tempted to use the fourth one called HNF. There's a lot of users, very happy users, last updated two weeks ago. So let's install that one. And when you install plugins, it's a two-step process. You then need to activate it. So click on that button again. And now on the left, we should have a new section somewhere. So let's scroll down and see if the left-hand side menu, possibly under settings. One of them now says header and footer. You have a bunch of tabs. If we go back to the MailerLite tab just for a second, to remind ourselves of where this needs to go, and they say right before the closing head tag. So let's switch back to the site. And this is the one here on every page. So let's paste that in that very first box. And then scroll down and save. Perfect. So now at any point moving forward, if you decide to create a pop-up within MailerLite, You've got it connected already. The pop-up will be enabled and active based on your MailerLite settings. So now let's look at our site and see that form in action. So let's test it to make sure that the form is actually talking to MailerLite. Okay, thank you. Please check your inbox. So let's do that. I'll let Chris check this particular inbox to make sure that she is seeing the double opt-in email. Please confirm your subscription. Yay, that part is working, confirming it. And then we are seeing this, so people can now download that book. Let's click that link, see if it works. Click on Get My Book. And yes, we are not asking for people's email address because she just gave it, right? So that's important to make sure that your book funnel page is not asking for that email address again. So we're all sorted. The form is indeed working. Now let's check our MailerLite dashboard to make sure that the email address was added. So if you go to subscribers, let's look at a group because we set this form to send people into a particular group called Website Sidebar 2020. If we click on that, we do see that we have a new subscriber. Yay! 
and obviously uh, Chris has already subscribed to other of her groups so that's why she's already got some email sense and open information but normally when you test it yourself uh, you would not be seeing any email sent and opens if you're just getting started off camera Chris and I moved that widget to a different placement so we moved it from the sidebar into one of our footer widget areas that was just a matter of dragging and dropping the widget from one sidebar area to another. So here's where the video continues. Here's what our sign up form looks like. So we may want to also put an image where we showcase what that free story looks like. So maybe include the book cover. So we could do another widget for that. So let's go to appearance widgets. Once again, here the interface is different because Chris is using WordPress.com. Uh, but once you're back in the regular WordPress interface, then this should be familiar to you. In the middle section, but left-hand side of that, if you scroll down, you will find something called Image. And we can now click on Image and put that in Footer 1 or maybe Footer 2. Your options will depend on your theme and however many widgets uh, placement are supported. So now when we scroll up on the right, we now see the place where we want to add the image. So let's click on add image and then upload that image to our site. So upload file is just to the left of that and find that file from your desktop. Add to widget. Save. Now I want to show you something very useful. Let's switch to our MailerLite tab. Because people tend to click on images, let's make that book cover clickable to go to that same sign up form. So if we go back to forms, let's find our form, which is an embedded form. So in the top menu, embedded form, website sidebar, Let's click to get embed code. And if you scroll a little bit up, there is that landing page that MailerLite automatically created for you. So let's copy that URL and let's paste that where the image links to. So click links to, there's a field, paste that in there. And now, before you save, click on Edit Image again. Expand the Advanced Options at the bottom. And let's make that open in a new tab because we are sending people away from our site. Anytime you do that, you want to open in a new tab. So let's click Update. And now Save. And now let's refresh our website let's go to the front end and scroll down now we see that image that we promise if we click on it it opens a new tab where that same landing page exists so let's say you also wanted to offer that landing page in your menu and you wanted to add a menu item that said free story we could do that so let's go and edit our menu. There's a section called Menus. Now you may have more than one menus. Here Chris has more than one. On the top bar it says select the menu to edit and right now it is set to primary. But if you look, she's got two menus. So she wants to make sure she's picking the right menu and right now is the right menu. But I want to give you another trick. Let's go all the way up to screen options on the right. If you scroll all the way up, there's that screen options tab. Make sure you select link target. And then you can close that again. That little checkbox will allow us to open that menu item into its own tab. So let's scroll down a little bit. On the left, there's a section called custom links. So we want to copy and paste that same landing page URL, which is still saved in our mouse there. And then link text can be free story. 
when we click Add to Menu, it's going to automatically move it to the very bottom of your existing menu. Now you can drag and drop it to place it wherever you want. On the right, just grab that free story and move it up and down, whichever. Right there is perfect. Now expand the arrow on the right. Next to Custom Link, there's a little tiny arrow. And now you can check Open Link in a new tab. So now let's save our menu and refresh our site. And now if she clicks on Free Story in the menu at the top, it opens a new page where people can sign up there. And obviously we can play with MailerLite. We can make this prettier down the road. But now you've got the basic understanding of how you can connect your MailerLite account to your website. So now we've got our form. We know that subscribers are indeed getting the double opt-in email and they are added to our MailerLite. That's great. But if you haven't read Newsletter Ninja, I recommend you stop watching this video. Go read her book. Tammy LeBrake knows her stuff. Uh, but let's set up an autoresponder where we will email our readers after they've signed up, where we introduce ourselves, introduce our books, try to get our personality to shine, get readers interested in staying on our list by sharing things that you are comfortable sharing at a frequency which is right based on your situation and the expectations you've set. So let's go back to that form that we created. Let's go to forms and embedded forms and then where it says get embed code for the website sidebar form. Now if you scroll all the way up we don't really need the embed code but that was the fastest way to get to this page. In the top, notice how it says Overview, Analytics, Automation. This is where we want to go. So Automation. And we want to create a workflow. Okay, so now this is already connected to our form because we access this automation by going first through forms. So keep that in mind. The only people who will enter this automation are the people who fill out the forms that we just created. So let's click that plus. And now it's asking us, what do you want to do? Now, totally up to you if you wanted to add a delay uh, or if you wanted to send it Im immediately. So for now, because we've already got the confirmation page with the download link, which you may or may not have done, you could do plus email and we could send them an email making sure they saw that page with the bonus. So let's click email. Define email content. So on the right, you need to give it a subject line. Now you want to double check that the email is coming from the right information and you want to click design email. Now you can use a drag and drop editor, which is probably the best way to go for most people. You could also create, look at the template gallery. If instead of starting from scratch, you can look through what they have. I would recommend something quite minimalist. The fewer images, the more likely it is to land in people's inbox. So totally up to you. Maybe you like the one that says list. And you can select that. You could also preview it. Let's click on the list image and then trash that image. So you click change and then pick your image. Perfect. So when you see that airmail logo, you can change that to be your image. Now let's keep scrolling down. Let's change more of that. So we don't need that you are on. We can delete the entire block with the trash can. Great. So now let's fix the text. Great. Okay. Now in that first automated email, it's important to try to get readers to click on it, which will help your deliverability. By that, I mean, if the people opened your email and then clicked on something, it will help give the signal that you are not spam. You're actually somebody that they want to hear from and Google and other email providers may be more likely to put 
your emails in people's inbox as opposed to their junk folder or promotions tab. For the case of Chris, she's most active on Facebook. She's on there daily. So that's her call to action where she thinks people who want to hear more from her may want to check out or Facebook page, or you could maybe invite them to join a group, whatever you want to do, or you could ask people to follow you on Amazon. It doesn't really matter, but the idea is to give them a call to action, ask them to do something that will get them to click somewhere on your, on a button or text somewhere in your email. So Chris is going to retrieve the author page, Facebook link. And now she's going back to MailerLite and she's going to edit that button that says go to my account. She already changed the text to follow me on Facebook and she's putting in that URL and then saving that. If you want to add a new block, make sure you save what you have. And then on the left, you can drag and drop a block into the position where you want it. So she's going to drag a text block, click to edit the text and say something, uh, give readers a reason to go and follow her on Facebook. Maybe she does giveaways on Facebook every now and then, and that's a reason to get people interested to come and check out her page. So now she's going to save. And the gist of how you set up an autoresponder is you include a delay in between emails. So we're going to click on delay. And then this is something that you decide. Seven days I find is good, and you can stick to a schedule so you know uh, they signed up for, to hear from you on a Tuesday, so the following Tuesday they'll get another email from you. Or you can, doesn't matter what you decide to do. There's a bunch of options, so let's just do seven days. And then you could do plus and then add another email. You could copy what you had from before, duplicate it so you keep the same format, totally up to you. So create as many emails as you need, put in as many delays as you want between them, and you can also set up an autoresponder that is only one or two emails long based on how they came into your list and then stop there and then transfer them into a different group or a different segment where you will onboard everybody using common emails that everybody can receive. But right now, this automation is not active yet. Very important in the top right, it says website sidebar workflow. You need to turn that on. Now it is on. So if we sign up again, Chris, could you go to the form on your site and then sign me up, C-A-R-O at creativecs.ca. And subscribe. So now I will be getting the double opt-in email. I will click to confirm, and then I should automatically receive the first email in her autoresponder series because the autoresponder has been turned on and it is associated with the web form where she just signed me up for her newsletter. So I got the email here. I'm just going to confirm. And I also got the first email in her automation, and it worked perfectly. So this is how you set up an automation within MailerLite when you want an automation to be associated with a specific bonus or a specific sign-up location. For example, what we're going to show you next, at the end of book one, Chris wants people to sign up to her newsletter and offer bonus chapters. So we're going to set up a separate form for that so that when people sign up through that different URL, they are sent to a different automation, which will offer those bonus chapters. Okay, so this is Chris's book funnel account, and she's got a book file here. It's not technically a full book, it's just bonus chapters, but she called it Dragon versus the Casino. So if we click on that, she's already uploaded a tagline, a description, her EPUB Mobi PDF. All of this has been uploaded. Her book cover, she doesn't have one just yet. Is she just using an image? And that's fine for our purposes for now. Now, we want to create a new landing page for this book, but we want to collect newsletter addresses because this is going to be offered at the very end of the book. If people have reached all the way there and they liked her book, they will want to hear more from her. They will 
potentially want to buy her next book. So it's important for her to collect those email addresses while readers are still interested. So let's scroll down and then create a landing page. And now BookFunnel gives you a lot of options and this will depend based on your plan. But she is on a plan that offers these features. So she wants to create a landing page, which is the second one from the top. I want to create a landing page and now it says here it can require a reader to join your mailing list. So this is what we want to do. So let's do click here to create a new page. Now it's asking us, we want to collect new readers. So this is what we want to do. So let's click that. You need to be on the middle plan, which I believe is $100. And then if you want to automatically integrate with your newsletter provider, I believe it costs an extra $50 a year, but it's well worth it. That is the plan that I am on and I totally love book funnel it is well worth it so we're going to do that and we're going to say the reader is required to join my list in order to receive the book and that's fine so if we scroll down then we should be able to click create landing page now we want to give it a name so maybe and matter book one bonus chapter something that will make sense to you we do not want to give it an expiry date because we want this to keep working for us in the background without us having to do anything. And same thing with the download limit. We don't want to put a limit there. Totally up to you if you want to ask for the reader's first name. Keep in mind that the less you ask, the more likely people are to subscribe. But first name, I think, is not so bad. I would rarely ask for people's last name. But uh, so she can leave those settings as she wants. But now we have a problem. If you look at the integration list, it says choose a list and then we don't have that list just yet. So let's switch over to MailerLite, leave this on hold while we go create a list or a group as it's called in MailerLite so that we know which readers we got from this particular sign up form. Go to subscribers and groups and let's add a group so create a group which is in the top right and let's call it something similar and matter book one bonus chapters and calling it book one may not make sense you may want to actually name your book because maybe you'll have multiple series so book one may not make sense two years from now okay we're creating the group perfect now we've got no subscribers that's totally fine let's switch to book funnel again and then let's refresh that integration list you see the double arrows there let's click on that and now let's look at the menu and we should see that new one that we just created and matter raindrops bonus chapters so now we've connected it to the right list that's perfect so let's scroll down a little bit let's preview our landing page you can click that preview, make sure it looks right. So we got the tagline, get my book. If we click on it, there should be a pop-up that requests the email address. Perfect. We want to make sure that's fine. And you can click that pop-up away and scroll all the way up and you can close that preview on the right. Great. Advanced settings, if you open that, I highly recommend you include your Facebook pixel if you have one. So if you scroll all the way down, you will see a field for Facebook pixel. And that is just a string of numbers. If you have that, you can put that there. And then you can then select if you want it to, to register when the page loads or when people do certain things. It just takes a second to set that up. And if you want to advertise on Facebook, this can be quite powerful down the road, but this is not mandatory. So let's set up a Facebook pixel for Chris. So go to business.facebook.com. Brand new tab. It helps if you're already logged in your personal Facebook account first. Chris already has a business manager account. If you don't, you will see a pop-up or something prompting you to create a business account. It is free. Uh, you can go ahead and create one. Now, the interface is probably going to be different for you because every time I look at it, it's different. Facebook keeps doing A-B split testing, I think. But in the top left corner where there's a Facebook icon and there's three lines called a hamburger menu next to business manager, click on that. And once again, this is going to look different for you, but somewhere in there, 
there's an events manager and pixels. So sometimes you will see something on the right, sometimes you will not see that, but for us, we do see create a Facebook pixel. So let's scroll down a little bit and then do that. Let's create a pixel. Let's leave it blank and continue. And now let's go to the middle one, manually add pixel code to website. The part that we currently care about is just the string of numbers, but we might as well include that Facebook pixel on your site. So you just click on that box and it automatically copies it to your clipboard. Let's go back to our site from before and include that Facebook pixel on our website. Okay, so in under settings, header and footer, where we were before to include our mailer light snippet, we're going to go back there and also in the head section. So right after you see and mailer light universal, put your cursor there, hit enter, and then paste the Facebook code right there. Totally fine to be one after the other. Great. Let's just scroll down and save. Okay. So the pixel has been added to the website, but we haven't added it to book funnel, which is what we were trying to do in the first place, but somewhere in there, you will see a string of number. So if you scroll down just a little bit, you will see that long string. So copy those numbers. Perfect. And let's go back to book funnel and put that pixel number in there. Perfect. And you can leave the default settings. That's fine and save your giveaway. Okay, so let's scroll back up. Click on Dragon versus the Casino in the top breadcrumb. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see any and all landing pages you've already created. So the one that we created today is that first one. If we click on it, we want to double check that our settings are correct. It will not expire. Unlimited people are required to join this specific list. Now at the top, you do have a short link and a long link. So what you need to do that we will not show you in this video here, you need to edit your book file for that book one where you want to offer that freebie. You need to manually include a link to that page. It's best to do it right after your last chapter, after the very last line. Maybe you say the end, maybe you don't, but put it right there as opposed to creating a new section. Because if you create a new section or a new chapter or end matter, sometimes retailers will stop showing your book before readers are able to see that link. So it's important to put it while Amazon or other retailers think it's still the main content of the book. So you would put that in your book and then people can then sign up. So to test this, Let's just copy one of those links and open a new tab. So we're pretending where somebody downloaded our book. The book has been recompiled, re-uploaded to all the retailers. They're reading the book. They're clicking on that link. So they are landing on that page. And let's have Chris subscribe to that list to make sure that things are working as they should in MailerLite. And maybe give uh, Chris, give yourself a funky first name here so we know it's definitely working. <laughs> you do need to understand that you are signing up for a newsletter. That's based on Chris's personal settings in BookFunnel and the way she is dealing with GDPR. So now she should get an email where she will be able to download those bonus chapters. But let's let's check. Here we go. And then if she clicks on that, then she will be able to download the book. So now let's also check MailerLite to make sure that it is connecting to the right list. So if we look at this group refresher page, we do have a new subscriber that was added. If you click on the name, let's see if we, we see your new funky first name.
Bananas. Here we go. So it even updated her first name because he changed it within BookFunnel. So this is how you can easily add exclusive content at the end of your book and integrate it with MailerLite. Now we can set up an autoresponder based on this. So let's go to automation and create a workflow, which is basically creating an automation. Now you will notice this is different. Now we have to pick the trigger. So let's click on that, see what our options are. Okay, so on the right is where you need to give it a name and select a trigger. So let's call this raindrops and matter bonus chapters. And the workflow trigger will be when the subscriber joins a group and then we need to find that group that we just created. And it even tells you the created date, so that makes it easy if, you, if you've got a bunch of groups. Let's just save our settings as they are. And now what do we want to do? So keep put yourself in the shoes of the reader who just got the email from BookFunnel. They were able to download the file. So I highly recommend you do not immediately send the file saying, did you enjoy them? Because give them a chance to read it. So let's add a delay to this thing. So let's click on plus and give it a delay. Now, you know how long those chapters are. So if you just gave them 10 pages, chances are they will have read them within the day. So let's do one day for this particular scenario. Because if they were really into the book, they wanted to read those last few chapters, the bonus chapters, they would have read them straight away for most people. And now let's add an email. So plus and then email. So Chris can now add more emails and add more delays depending on what she decides to do with people. So perhaps she wants to check to see if people enjoyed the bonus chapters, ask them questions, should the ending have been different, whatever she wants to do. It's your list, your automations, and you can create as many as you want. When you're all done with your automation, make sure to go back and activate that automation by turning on the toggle in the top right when you review your workflow. So I hope you enjoyed this course here and you found it useful. If you enjoy my teaching style, I recommend you go to gocreate.me and you will find a tab on the menu called Courses. And you can sign up for some of my courses here. I currently have a free course that walks you through how to get a domain name and install WordPress. And these are the providers I use and recommend. And you can get it sorted for less than $80 a year, depending on the domain name you buy. But it's a, it's a great deal and I walk you through step by step. And then I will have more courses coming up, mostly related to author websites and sometimes I get into side things such as how to connect MailerLite to your website. So sign up if you're interested. Now it's time to go and write more books, so go and create.